Do rich people know something that the poor and the middle class don't? Do rich people do things that the poor and middle class don't? Well, according to best-selling author Robert Kiyosaki, the answer is a definitive yes to both of those questions. But Kiyosaki is famous for his best-selling personal finance book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, wherein he learns lessons from his two dads, his poor dad being his real dad, who was a highly educated man, went to school, got good grades, got a good job, where his rich dad was actually his friend Mike's father, who was an entrepreneur, businessman, and investor. And in the book, he compares the life lessons he learned from both of these men growing up and the different type of advice they got and the different type of lives they led after following their own advice. Now, Kiyosaki is a super polarizing figure both in print media and online, and I don't agree 100% at all with his strategies, his philosophies, but I think everybody should read his book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, at least once. And the reason why is I don't really see it as a personal finance book, I see it as a book about entrepreneurship. So in today's video, what I'm gonna do is give a review and break down the three big ideas, the three golden nuggets that you gotta know from this book and help you apply them to your business. So even if you don't read it, you can take action on the advice inside. Let's jump in. Golden nugget number one, the rich don't work for money. Straight out of the gate, Kiyosaki comes out with this overarching principle for the entire book. The poor and middle class work for money, the rich have money work for them. What he means by this is that growing up, there is a certain type of success that we are told to chase after starting in school. And the path is laid out very clearly for you. It's get good grades while you're in school so you can get into a good college or university so that you can get a good job, i.e. a high paying job, which leads to a never ending cycle of working to earn and then spending that money that you earned which goes on rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. However, the rich, in his opinion, do something totally different. They don't think about working for money as much as they think about looking for ways to almost invent money out of thin air and find ways to get that money then to work for them. In his own words, most people have a price and they have a price because of human emotions named fear and greed. First, the fear of being without money motivates us to work hard. And then once we get that paycheck, greed or desire starts us thinking about all the wonderful things money can buy. The pattern is set. Get up, go to work, pay bills. Get up, go to work, pay bills. People's lives are forever controlled by two emotions, fear and greed. Offer them more money and they continue the cycle by increasing their spending. This is what I call the rat race. Now, maybe you can identify with that fear of not having enough income, not having enough money to pay your bills, which leads you to work. That's a real fear. And it's that fear typically that holds people back, held me back for many, many years from chasing after work that they love or pivoting into a new career or starting a business, which is my biggest goal for you. Things that will set them up to be financially free and to be free with their time, which is just as valuable as money. And it makes sense that we have this fear and this need to go after a job because that's what we're told, that money comes from an employer. You go to work, you get paid, and that's all we know, and that's all we're conditioned to do. But Robert Kiyosaki sees another way, a way that we would call entrepreneurship. And he basically says that there's unlimited income earning potential out there if you just look for it. As the rich dad in the book tells young Mike and young Robert, keep working boys, but the sooner you forget about needing a paycheck, the easier your life will be. Keep using your brain, work for free, and soon your mind will show you ways of making money far beyond what you could ever be paid. You'll see things that other people never see. Most people never see these opportunities because they're looking for money and security. So that's all they get. But the moment you see an opportunity, you'll see them for the rest of your life. So rather than working for a paycheck, what Kiyosaki and I would encourage you to do is find ways to serve people. Find ways to help people achieve something, help people get a desired result, help meet a need, 
Keep your eyes open for what the pain points, the problems are, what the solutions need to be to help people in their lives, and do initial work for free if it gets you in front of people and gets you in the position to start being of value to them. A great way to do this is by starting to share content online for free, whether it's YouTube videos or blog posts or podcasts. You can create a name for yourself by becoming this valuable, helpful resource online, serving people, working for free initially, but then developing a rapport and building an audience which can then be monetized in a bunch of different ways. This is the story of my business, right? I've been putting out content for almost a decade and on the heels of that audience and that content that I've been putting out that's serving and helping, I've been able to build a profitable business. And if you have a day job right now, that's okay. All I'm asking you to do is spend a few minutes each day opening your eyes and looking for potential ways to serve somebody, help somebody, find a need. You have to open your eyes to see it, but look, when you got a few minutes each day, commit to finding needs and starting to serve people and help people. And eventually you'll be able to build it into a business that serves you as well. Golden nugget number two from Rich Dad Poor Dad, the rich buy or acquire assets, the poor middle class buy liabilities. The idea is to focus on buying assets not liabilities. Okay, so what's the difference between the two? According to Kiyosaki, an asset is anything that puts money into your pocket, and a liability is anything that takes money from or out of your pocket. Even more poignant is how Kiyosaki puts it in his book. Rich people acquire assets, but the poor and middle class acquire liabilities that they think are assets. Okay, good examples of an asset would be income producing rental real estate, stock dividends, or my personal favorite, passive income online style business. Examples of liabilities that many of the middle class buy thinking that their assets are car loans, mortgages, and student loans. Now listen, most people in America try really hard to get a good paying job. And where it usually starts is with borrowing way too much money in student loans to go to college to get a degree that doesn't justify the cost of those student loans because the income earning potential isn't there. And when they graduate and get whatever job they can get, they start driving a nice car and buy a nice home, both of which they have to borrow money for because they can't actually afford those things. And all that does is add two massive monthly payments in addition to now your monthly student loan payment. And just like that, even in their 20s, they'll never be able to get ahead. Instead, if you were to focus on acquiring income producing assets, things that actually get money to flow to you each month, rather than having your money flow out away from you each month, you would be in such better shape every year, every five years, every 10 years, you'd be getting closer and closer to that financial sweet spot. And the best part about it is you can start building your own income producing asset, i.e. an online business for less than $50. I started my first online business, Recording Revolution, almost a decade ago for less than a hundred bucks and now it has turned into a near seven figure a year business. And finally, golden nugget number three, wealth equals how long you can survive without working. You see, in the book, Robert Kiyosaki drops this massive truth bomb that having a big income or even a big net worth doesn't necessarily mean that you're wealthy. In his own words, wealth is a person's ability to survive so many number of days forward. Or if I stopped working today, how long could I survive? Now, I want you to stop for a minute and think about this for yourself. Ask yourself this question. If you were to stop working today, don't go into work today, tomorrow, next week, how long would you be able to continue to pay your bills before you need to go back to work and get a paycheck again? Or if you're a business owner, how long could you stop working in your business and still have revenue coming in even when you're not there? Kisaki goes on to say, unlike net worth, which is the difference between your assets and your liabilities, which is filled with a person's expensive junk and opinions of what things are worth, this definition creates the possibility for developing a truly accurate measurement. Wealth measures your financial survivability. Have you ever thought about that? What is your financial survivability if you were to strip away your paycheck or immediately stop working in your own business? How many days? How many weeks maybe? 
Now this concept is generally an eye opener for people. If your ability to pay the bills is tied to you actually showing up and working, either for a boss or for yourself, then what happens when you can no longer work? What happens when you get sick? When you get injured, you get terminally ill, you lose creativity, you lose innovation, you, you need to move closer to family, you need to move somewhere else to put your kids in a different school. What happens when you lose a job or your business revenue dries up? Do you have a source of ongoing income that isn't tied to you physically being able to produce? See, this is where the idea of passive income comes in. And this is why I'm so passionate about the subject because no matter what work you do or what business you have, if you don't have a passive income element to what you do, you're running a risky operation. Having some ongoing element of income that's not tied to you physically showing up and working gives you greater financial survivability. And there's unlimited potential for something like that. Now, I get a lot of questions about passive income. And I wish in Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki went there, but he didn't because this book was written in 97 and his focus was more on real estate. And while that is a great way to create some income producing assets, it's an expensive and complicated way, but an easier and virtually free way to do it is with an online business and creating some sort of digital online passive income. Now, a lot of people know about the concept, but they don't know how to start. And I was thinking about a way to help you figure out what would be not only a good fit for you, but your next steps in passive income. So what I've done is put together a passive income potential quiz for you. This is a simple 30 second quiz you can fill out. And what it's gonna do is ask you a few simple questions about your unique situation, and then it's gonna generate a custom report that will give you sort of a grade of to what your passive income potential is and some recommended next steps for you, specifically the three next steps you need to take depending on what your situation is. It's absolutely free to take. I think it'll be a very helpful tool for you and it might help you figure out what to do next if this sounds appealing to you, starting to think about creating some sort of passive income. So to take the quiz, just click on the link below this video or go to grahamcochran.com slash quiz and you'll be done in 30 seconds. You'll know exactly what to do first, second, and third after you fill out the quiz. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for subscribing to these videos and I'll see you on another video real soon.